Friends, I welcome you to my channel. Before listening to this story, I will ask you to like and subscribe. It is not difficult for you, but it is pleasant for me. And we're starting. I was standing in the middle of a bridge on our river. In my hand, I held the object that turned my life around so much, changed it radically. It was raining and it was chilly. I shivered and opened my umbrella. I somehow did not dare to part with this subject, but it was necessary. I was absolutely sure of that. Memories came flooding back. After graduating from high school, I had no doubts about where I was going to study. I chose the Ryazan Airborne School. The fact is that I have always been involved in combat sports. Judo, boxing, hand-to-hand -hand combat. That's a list of all the things I've been doing throughout high school. In addition, I had a grandfather who served in the paratroopers all his life. He talked a lot about his service, and I dreamed that I would become an officer. There were no problems with admission. Grandpa didn't even have to bring up his old connections. I passed all the exams perfectly and became a cadet. A lot of beautiful girls came to our school for evenings. That's how I met my future wife, Olga. We were the same age, and as it turned out, we had a lot of common interests. Olga studied to be an art critic. You can probably tell me what we have in common. A simple saldophon and a refined nature of a girl from an intelligent Russian family. But this is not the case. We had a lot in common. My mother instilled in me a craving for art. My parents were both teachers, and my mother taught the children Russian language and literature. So my Olya and I had enough in common. Time passed, and the graduation of our school came. Olga also graduated from her university. We didn't waste any time and got married right away. We loved each other. I got to serve in the Airborne Special Forces. I will not talk long and tediously about our wanderings through the garrisons. It wasn't easy. In the process, our daughter Nastenka was born. We decided to stop for now. It would be hard to have a second child, so we decided not to yet. Moreover, I had many business trips to hotspots and my wife was left alone. Unfortunately, she did not have the opportunity to work in the profession she so dearly loved. So where is it? You understand that yourself. And it bothered her. We lived very amicably for the first few years and never quarreled. Our love helped. But then my Olushka began to get more and more tired of such a life. She began to insist that I somehow settle down somewhere at the headquarters. A standardized working day, weekends, and most importantly, the absence of these business trips, from which I could be brought in parts. Of course, she didn't enjoy it, I understood that. But that was my life. Something like that. When Nastya turned 12, my wife inherited a luxury apartment in one of the major regional centers of Russia. Some lonely aunt of hers died, and Olga gave me an ultimatum. That's enough. She and her daughter are moving to live there and will finally be able to live normally, work in your field, and in general enjoy the comfort of living in a big city. I was asked to decide which was more important to me than my family or my service. Now she called it a game of soldiers, and not so long ago she was so proud of me. Time is passing. I'm not going to tell you guys how I managed to transfer to serve my family. It was very difficult, but it succeeded. I think my merits, military awards, and the authority of the command had an effect. However, I did not leave the service, as Olga dreamed. And although now we all live together in a great apartment, the business trips continued. Well, I couldn't say goodbye to the service. I've always dreamed of this. And who would I become in civilian life? I don't think I'd make a cool businessman. Olya finally realized her dream and got a job as an art critic. How much joy there was. So another five years passed. I continued to be sent on my business trips, and Olga was making a career. I had several injuries. Not very serious, but still. Well, I didn't go to the resorts. Every time Olga threw tantrums and begged me to leave the service, she pointed out some of our friends who left the service and went into business. But it wasn't mine. My wife often reproached me that my service was more important to me than my family. So we slowly began to move away. And then the trouble happened. On one of my business trips to the Middle East, I was very badly injured. Besides the concussion, I injured my spine. In addition, my right leg was badly damaged. A nerve was touched and the forecasts were disappointing. She could have refused altogether. In short, I was discharged. That's how I became disabled. I was given a pension. But you know, this is not something that could please my wife. At that time, Olga had been working as a consultant for a local oligarch, antiquarian, and philanthropist, Arkady Seversky, for some time. I saw that they had a close relationship. I don't know if my wife cheated, but they spent a lot of time together. It was not pleasant, it caused fears, but what could I do? And by that time, my relationship with my wife had become more than cool. 
Now that I was essentially disabled, Olga didn't even try to talk to me much. She just informed me that she was going somewhere on a business trip or going to a meeting, that's all. All my attempts to talk ended up with her accusing me of being to blame for everything, that she warned me that it would all end like this, that before it was necessary to talk, but it is better to do something for the family. The relationship with my daughter was also not the best. She was already an adult girl, and you know what kind of youth you are now. In short, no one needed a disabled person, and somehow my homeland has forgotten me. I had, although not the largest, but still a pension, and could undergo treatment at a rehabilitation center for veterans of hotspots. It's all true, but how much is it, considering my disability at the age of 40? I do not think so. I knew it was only a matter of time before I was shown the door. The apartment was my wife's, and I couldn't claim it. The fact that I sold the apartment of my deceased parents and spent all the money on the family, and in particular on the luxurious renovation of our apartment, was not taken into account. I tried to be treated, I did my best to recover, but it didn't help much. According to doctor's forecasts, the leg could completely fail soon. But that's not all. Due to a spinal injury, I could have been paralyzed altogether. Now I was moving with a wand and it was only at the age of 40. Because of my injury, Olga and I stopped making love. No, my potency was fine, thank God. But the pain in my back and leg made it impossible. We even stopped trying. That's how our marriage became asexual in general. Just flatmates and now I have become an undesirable neighbor. Like that. And at this time when, to be honest, I was completely drooping, an event happened that changed everything in my life. I got an inheritance. Well, you can't get Olenka alone. Not millions. No. Just a house on the outskirts of the city and an old UAZ. So there are millions of them from somewhere. My old friend just died. We once served together and he, like me, was retired and very ill. We met again at the Rehabilitation Center for Veterans. That's where we got closer. A common misfortune brings people closer together. He never got a family and left everything to me. I was very surprised by this, but that's what he did. Of course, God knows what, but still a roof over your head. I didn't tell Olga about it. Yes, we haven't talked for a long time. I decided to explore my new possessions. I've been to visit him before, but it was on a visit. And now, I'm the owner. It was a solid log house with a fireplace. Gas and water supply were provided for heating. In short, the house was suitable for normal living. Of course, repairs were needed, but so far I couldn't afford it. I decided to start the inspection from the attic. From top to bottom, so to speak. It was a little hard to do with my leg, but now what? The attic was a complete mess. Piles of junk were piled up here and there. I noticed an object wrapped in burlap in the corner. When I unwrapped it, it turned out to be a casket measuring about 60 centimeters by 40. I decided to take him down for a more detailed inspection. I lit a fireplace, I like fire in general, and settled comfortably in an armchair. He put the casket on the coffee table. Then he poured himself a cognac. My leg ached. It was clearly an antique casket, one could even say antique. The funny thing was that there was no lock, as are the keyholes. However, it was locked. When I shook it, I realized that there was something inside. It intrigued me. Now I don't even remember how long I've been turning it over in my hands in search of a way to open it. I'll just say that it's been a long time. I didn't want to break it. The casket was really beautiful. The fact that there was no hole for the key told me that there must be some kind of lever or button. But I couldn't find him. And when I was almost desperate, I heard a click, and the lid on the spring bounced off a couple of centimeters. When I opened it, there was a scroll of several parchments inside, a heavy velvet pouch and a snake figurine. I don't know why, but my hand reached out on its own and I took the snake. It was made of some kind of silvery metal. I still haven't figured out which one. Although it wasn't big, it was very heavy, as if it were made of gold or lead. But this was clearly not the case. But I was sure it wasn't silver or steel either, apparently some kind of alloy. I was also surprised that the figure was very cold. It was like coming out of the freezer, which couldn't help but surprise. When I picked it up, I was not a little impressed by how skillfully it was executed. Every scale was worked out. The master who made it was clearly very talented. It was a coiled snake, its head raised with its mouth open in a snarl. It seemed to me that her eyes were looking straight into my face. I even felt a kind of chill. So this figure was expertly executed. I turned it over in my hands and suddenly felt light injections. It was as if faint electric shocks were running through my fingers. I lost consciousness. 
I woke up in an ancient hut. In the corner stood a simple Russian stove, in which logs crackled. I looked around. Everything around me spoke of decrepitude. There was a table not far from me, at which sat a dry, gray-haired old woman dressed in rags. A large black crow was perched on her shoulder and was fingering its feathers with its beak. Opposite the old woman, a huge, fat, black cat sat at the table with an important look. They were playing dominoes. The three of them didn't pay any attention to me. It's like I never existed. There was only the clatter of dominoes on the table. I coughed. No reaction. Then I took a closer look around. Well, yes, an old Russian hut. Unpainted planed plank floors. Bunches of dried herbs, bundles of onions and garlic are hung on the walls. As in the picture of the life of a Russian peasant of the Middle Ages. At least that's what it seemed to me at the time. And then there was a loud knock of dominoes on the table and an exclamation, Fish! This caught my attention and at that moment the three of them looked at me. The old woman turned to me. I could see her now. A completely dried up and very old granny. Her skin seemed to cling to her bones. Gray matted locks of hair escaped from under the scarf. She made a repulsive impression. It seemed to me that she herself had forgotten how old she was. But what was fascinating about her was her eyes. Bright green, burning with a special light. She pierced through them and looked into the very soul. I felt uneasy. The old woman stretched out her hand in my direction and pointed a crooked index finger. Who are you? I was even confused. It seems like a banal and simple question, but I didn't know how to answer. All I could mumble was this. My name is Vladimir. The old woman shrugged her shoulders dismissively. I know your name. I ask, who are you? A snotty muslin young lady or an adult young man? An officer, a warrior. The cat interrupted her. Yes, give him a knee in the ass. I've been here. His leg hurts. I may be in pain too. My tail hurts over there. And what? The old woman reached out and scratched the cat behind the ear. He purred and licked her. I looked to the right at the ceiling. That's it. It's delirium tremens. Well, how about it? A talking cat. And he didn't drink at all. So 150 grams. No more. At that moment, a noise attracted me. It was a crow flapping its wings and cawing. What did the idiot hatched? Have you never seen a talking cat? I looked down at the floor to the left. I definitely caught a squirrel. The crow also spoke. It's a madhouse. Now Alechka will turn me in with a calm soul. She doesn't have to explain much. Well, there are the consequences of concussion and all that. I almost didn't drink, the old woman continued. You're cute. Pull up your panties and wipe your snot. It's disgusting to watch. Ugh, you're still very young. That jabberwocky turned 700 years old just now, and there he is. What a daredevil. What are you doing? The cat puffed up at these words from his own importance. I thought it would burst in an hour, but it got through. It didn't happen. The crow cawed again. Yes, it's stupid to listen to him. Jabberwocky is right. Give me a knee in the ass and that's it. The old woman gently patted the crow. Well, don't get mad, Karkusha. I can see that he was ashamed of himself. Calm down, honey. She turned to me. In short, well done. Let's get it together. And I'll help you with your health. I have a sister. Blue-eyed is called. She took care of other people. So the darling will help you too. I'll tell you how to find her. But you're not bad yourself. Get treated. It's not a matter of whining, do you hear? And give my sister my debt to her. I lost to her at cards. She's probably a con artist, but you know the gambling debt. It's a holy cause. Then she reached out to me and put a gold coin in my palm. Tell her this. She'll be waiting for you. Then the old woman told me in detail how to find her sister. And after that, she lost all interest in me. She turned away and began to mix the dominoes. The jabberwocky jumped up to me and slapped Fofana on the forehead. I came to myself again in my room by the fireplace. I looked around. It's a dream. Looking at my right hand, I saw that I was still holding the snake figurine. For some reason, I wanted to get rid of it as soon as possible, and I threw it back into the casket. His forehead ached unbearably. After all, this cat gave me a good punch. Oh, stop. What kind of a cat? I just imagined it. I glanced at my left hand. I opened it and a gold coin lay glittering in front of me in the palm of my hand. Did you really not see it? And what was that? Where have I been? What was that all about? It didn't matter how I felt. It's like all the energy has been drained out of me. I decided to go to bed and think about it all in the morning. Strangely enough, I slept well. It's even wonderful.
Getting up, I stretched my legs and trudged into the kitchen to cook breakfast. I always had a big breakfast. This habit has developed over the years. I fried tomatoes with fried eggs, sliced a piece of salted lard, peeled an onion, and had breakfast with an appetite. I generally liked simple, hearty food, unlike my wife. When we were still getting along, she often took me out to dinner at a restaurant, but it wasn't mine, and now I've even forgotten when we got out. Apparently, she was ashamed to accompany a disabled person. I don't know. After breakfast, I felt a surge of strength. He brewed the strongest coffee in an iron mug and decided to continue exploring the contents of the casket. I decided not to touch the snake anymore. You never know what. I unwound the scroll. It turned out to be five drawings. Being not a particular connoisseur of painting, I certainly could not appreciate the find. But I immediately realized that they were old and probably worth something. I needed to consult a specialist, so I put them aside for now. Then I poured the contents of the pouch onto the table. Two dozen gold coins appeared in front of my eyes. As I have already said, I have been to the Middle East and I easily recognize the Arabic script. Yes, they were Arabic coins, and they were in excellent preservation. I had no doubt that they were antique, so I needed a good antique dealer and needed to think about it. I didn't want to be tricked like the last sucker. Well then, it wasn't even that bad. But I decided to contact Blue Eye first. What the hell is not joking while God is sleeping? And maybe the truth will help with health. So I put all my artifacts back in the casket and hid them well. They will have their turn. I went home. Is it home, though? I didn't know that. And he looked into the water. When I entered my apartment, Olga was waiting for me in the kitchen. She pointed to a chair at the kitchen table. That's when I heard the sacramental phrase. Vladya, we need to talk. She took a deep breath. Vladya, what I want to say will not be easy, but it just can't go on like this. You already know that we've been estranged for a long time. You have your own life, and I have mine. And this is your choice, Vladya. Before you call me the last bitch, I just want to tell you, Vladya. How many times have I told you to choose a family? And you? What did you choose, Vladya? You saved the world. So I was saved before. It's your decision. And I'm still young. Understand that I want to live and live well. You chose your own destiny and you have to live with it. How long could you play soldiers? I told you how it would end. That's how it happened. Okay. You didn't give a damn about me, but what about our daughter? She needs her father's support. And what kind of support can you provide now? Look at what your heroism has led to. Look at yourself in the mirror. Has your homeland taken care of you? When she needed you, she used you. And now what? A poor disability pension? And that's what you fought for, although it was your choice. I warned you. Vladya, I met a man quite a long time ago. I haven't cheated on you for a long time, at least physically. But then it turned into something more. I'm sorry, but it's all your fault. We love each other, and we want to be together. I've been wanting to tell you for a long time, but I still didn't dare. I understand your condition now, but I can't lie to you anymore, and I don't want to. As you know, this apartment belongs to me by inheritance, so you'll have to move out. I know you want to remind me that you sold your parents' apartment and spent money on your family. But it's your duty. You're a husband, the head of the family. And you're the father. But I'm giving you half a year to solve your housing problems, Vladya. I'm going out myself today. Actually, I already moved out while you were gone. You didn't even bother to say you weren't coming over. You see how we've become strangers. Nastya is leaving with me. You've drifted away from her too, alas. Yes, we will stay with Arkady for these six months, but then you'll have to move out. I'm sorry, but that's Vladya's life. I will file for divorce myself. Arkady will take care of it. You don't have to worry. Just please don't cause any problems. It's going to get worse for you, believe me. I'm sorry again that it ended like this. But again, it's your own fault. Well, will you say a word or will you be silent? I shrugged my shoulders. So, what to say? You said it all yourself. Divorce means divorce. I won't hold you. Olga seemed offended by these words, but she didn't show it. I'm glad you got it right. Goodbye. With these words, my now almost ex-wife got up and went to the exit. She paused in the doorway. If you want to meet with your daughter, then call. I won't turn her against you. Yes, she is already an adult herself. I'm also in touch if you have any questions. With that, she closed the door. The door from our marriage? You probably expected me to raise a battalion and take that bastard Arkady's house by storm? Well, or at least shoot from a grenade launcher. But I didn't have either. 
Strangely, I didn't even have any bitterness. Apparently, I've already come to terms with the loss of my family. Of course, it was a shame that you were thrown out like that. But what's the point here? It doesn't happen like that. But I had the main thing now. There was hope. Yes, I believed that maybe it's not over and the situation will improve. I may be alone, but life goes on. And this is the main thing. I did not delay and after a couple of days, I went in search of the blue-eyed one. It wasn't that hard to find her. The old woman told me in detail where she lives. The blue-eyed woman lived, as it turned out, not in some kind of hut, but in a comfortable cottage with two floors. When I rang the doorbell, it immediately opened, as if they were already waiting for me. I was even surprised. I was greeted by an elderly but self-looking lady. I immediately understood why the old woman called her that. Her eyes were like two lakes, bright blue in color. Come on, come on in, I've been waiting for you. Where have you been? Pelagia has already informed me that you need help. The nobility is sick. Well, I'll cure you quickly. And I didn't put them on their feet. I remember Koshi was so sick that he couldn't even talk. Do you know Koshchai? I mumbled. An immortal. Blue Eyes nodded. Him, his falcon, an immortal, you say. And then he was dying completely. Well, when his Ivan Sarovich is... Do you really know this story? I nodded in agreement. She continued. Yes. When Ivan broke the needle, Koshchai completely fell apart. I thought that was it. But I went out for a while. And there are no UHF, electrophoresis. I'm already not talking about EMRT at all. Only decoctions of herbs and conspiracies. He's as good as new, like that. Then she became sad. The scoundrel turned out to be, yeah, a bastard ran away with a young witch. And after all, who did you covet? The girl is still quite young. You've only turned 300 years old and you're... You're all male males. I spread my hands in frustration. Blue Eyes said so. Well, all right. You're staying with me tonight. We will be treated. I will smoke you, give you decoctions to drink and read conspiracies. I'll take the bottle with me tomorrow. You will drink a tablespoon on an empty stomach every day. It's enough for a month and then you'll come back. Understood? But don't forget about medicine either. Continue the physiotherapy and physical exercises. You can't help yourself. No one will help you. Then I caught myself and took out the very coin that Pelagea had given me. Your sister handed over a debt here. She says she owes you a favor. Blue Eyes giggled. The old hag will know how to play cards with me. This is not for her to beat the jabberwocky. Then everything happened, just as the blue-eyed woman said. The day and night were tense. She treated me. At night I dreamed about everything. I was throwing myself into cold sweats and hot sweats, so I only dozed off in the morning. When I got enough sleep, I went home, agreeing to meet exactly one month later. And I will tell you that after the first session, I felt much better. I can't even remember when I felt so good. I finally believed that they would help me. Arriving at my now abandoned apartment, I packed up my belongings and threw them into the car. I decided not to wait half a year and move out right away. I texted Olga that I had vacated the living space and threw the key in the mailbox. That's the end of the marriage. Now it was necessary to develop a plan of action. I came to the rehabilitation center and insisted on a repeat course with a physiotherapist. I decided not to feel sorry for myself and in addition to classes at the center, I began to study at home. Fortunately, it was easy to arrange all sorts of horizontal bars and devices for a set of exercises in your home. I decided to cure myself with all my might to spite everyone. Now I decided to deal with the drawings and coins that I got. To do this, I had to contact my old colleague in the neighboring regional city. As I knew, his grandfather was an old and very knowledgeable antique dealer. And most importantly, I was sure that this friend would never deceive me. We went through such a thing that I met my friend Igor. We sat, drank, and remembered the past. I told him about being alone now. He sympathized with me, but now what? And then I met his grandfather. He was an imposing old man. There are few of them left now. An old school intellectual. When I unfolded the drawings, his eyes bulged. He even lost his speech, but only gasped and groaned, examining them with a magnifying glass. Then he looked at me. And where, may I ask, did you get this wealth, young man? Of course, we need to conduct an examination, but I am still sure that these are the originals. Do you even understand what you brought me? I just shrugged my shoulders, honestly. I inherited it. He was even afraid to let go of these drawings. It's a Rembrandt. Yes, yes, that's the one. 
These drawings were in the collection of a Jewish collector in Germany. In the 30s of the last century, the Nazis sent him to a concentration camp and the drawings disappeared. No one has ever heard of them again. And then you bring them to me. It's phenomenal. After that, I put the coins in front of him. However, they did not make such an impression on him. He said they were certainly not cheap, but Rembrandt. That's something. I said I needed the money. He advised me to wait with the drawings. I had to contact people in Moscow. Only there could be a buyer for such things. But my grandfather promised to help with the coins. He had a good numismatist in mind. I left some coins for him to sell, and that was the end of it. Previously, Grandpa took photos of all the drawings. We agreed to keep in touch. I returned home and continued my treatment. And so I met her in the center. My doctor was Galina Stepanovna. Galia. I knew right away that it was her. The one. The only. However, so far I have decided not to force things. Who remembers I'm an invalid with a wand? But now I had hope. The hope is that everything will change in speed. I was being treated. He was treated tirelessly. Now it was for what, or rather for whom. Somehow I immediately developed a fairly close relationship with Galena. She was a divorced lady about 30 years old, with a little daughter. It was impossible to say that she was a painted beauty, but there was something about her that so attracts all men. Galena was extremely feminine, unlike my ex-wife. A cold beauty, there was kindness in her eyes, and I especially liked it. Would you say I'm too old for her? Well, fuck you. Time passed, and I was getting better and better. Every month I went to the blue-eyed woman for a new portion of the potion. During this time, the coins that I left with the old antique dealer managed to be sold. When I received the money, I was shocked. Even for the six coins that I left at the first meeting, I got so much money that I became a well-off person. Truth. Even the antique dealer himself did not expect how valuable they were. Of course, I counted out the percentage for the services, and we agreed on the next batch. Life was really getting better. And you know, but I was fascinated by all this antiques. I mean, I started reading a lot about all this. After the service, this was the first hobby for me. The income that it brought me was not superfluous. I managed to make friends with my grandfather, and his name was Aristarchus Ivanovich, and I even began to dream that we would do all this professionally with him. Moreover, he didn't mind. Meanwhile, my relationship with Galena was developing. After I threw away the cane, I finally decided to invite her to spend the evening in a restaurant. It was a wonderful evening. We talked a lot, joked, drank great wine, because now I could afford it. But then an incident happened which slightly spoiled the evening. My ex-wife appeared with her Arcadi. I forgot to say that by that time we had already been safely divorced. I signed all the papers and we quietly and without any complaints to each other completed our marriage. I did not see Olga herself. Only her lawyer and Arkady were present. Maybe she was ashamed to look me in the eye once again. Although it is unlikely, of course. This couple marched into the restaurant hall with a regal gait. I was watching them. I must admit I was curious because the last time I saw her was back then in the kitchen, when we parted. It was amazing to see how much arrogance and swagger appeared in her. Was it really my wife once? Or maybe I just didn't see it all or didn't want to see it. I resumed the conversation with Galena, and then she wanted to dance and we went out on the dance floor. When we began to spin in the dance, out of the corner of my eye, I noticed that Olga's angry and at the same time surprised gaze was constantly following me. I was pleased with that. Let the bitch know that I didn't get drunk and didn't fall apart. As I said, the evening was great. I accompanied Galia home. I'll tell the most impatient right away that I didn't even try to invite myself to visit. I decided not to force things, let everything develop smoothly, especially since she had a little daughter, Masha. Yes, I haven't had lovemaking for probably about a year, imagine, but I really began to feel special feelings for Galena, and I didn't drag her to bed. I think I started falling in love with her. Will you say something quickly after the divorce? No, guys, not fast. This stamp appeared in my passport two months ago, and my marriage has not worked for quite a long time. And so came my last visit to the blue-eyed woman for a potion. She said earlier that I wouldn't need to come anymore, that I'm practically healthy now. Our last time was the same as always. Whispering, fumigation, etc. And then when I went to bed, well, yeah, blue eyes came to my bed. I've said before that she was quite beautiful, even though she was an old lady. I was even afraid to ask how old she was. And who asks women that? Yeah, that's it.
He'll be offended and turn me into a stump. You know, I wasn't sure she couldn't do it. In short, our last meeting was excellent. You remember making love, I haven't had it for a long time, but with new health, the boner was stone. And the blue-eyed woman turned out to be another inventor. Okay, I won't go into detail, but we had a good break. At parting, she said that she was actually Aglaya, and her sister Pelagea called her blue-eyed. She stroked my cheek, and that was the end of it. Well, gentlemen, everything worked out. Only now, a worm of doubt was gnawing at me. Shouldn't I take a little revenge on that bitch Arkady? He's a bastard who ruined my family. Yes, the wife is to blame. She betrayed me. This is true. But after all, he made quite a few efforts to seduce her. No, it couldn't be left like that. So I have an interesting plan. I think with all this mysticism and devilry, I've become a bit of an adventurer. This plan could not be called anything other than an adventure. What have I decided? And I decided to take away from this scoundrel the most precious thing for him. Just like he took away the most precious thing for me. Only if for me it was my family, then for him it was definitely his antique business. That way I would have killed two birds with one stone. First, I punished the bastard. And secondly, he would have become the owner of a business, which he himself now wanted to do. And after all, I had a lot to run this business. Not a small capital and a qualified partner in the person of a friend's grandfather, Aristarchus Ivanovich. I decided to implement my plan in two stages. At the first stage, it was necessary to introduce Arkady into large expenses and force him to do outright stupid things. On the second, to deprive him of his reputation. And reputation in the antique business is everything. Who would buy expensive antique valuables from an unreliable seller? Don't even answer. But how to pull it all off? As you remember, this Arkady was still that womanizer and womanizer. And who else can make this type do stupid things and run into big expenses if not a woman? Only it had to be a special woman, a goddess and a witch at the same time. But I didn't have any such acquaintances. In general. And from where? That's when I remembered the snake figurine. And what the hell is not joking about? But what if it works? Only Pelagia could help me with this. It's probably the same as a witch. Well, if it helped once, then maybe it will help again. I decided to give it a try. It seemed to me firmly that it was the snake that helped me in that meeting. I don't know why, but I was sure. I gathered my courage, went to face the mirror, and held the statuette tightly in my hand. I wanted to do it in front of a mirror. Maybe he wanted to see something, and I wanted it for a reason. Not long before, my eyes suddenly turned from brown to bright green and the other to bright blue. Thunder rumbled. I found myself on the shore of a picturesque lake. The sun was setting directly in front of me. Looking around, I saw a bridge jutting out into the lake. A jabberwocky cat was sitting on the edge of the bridge fishing. I walked slowly over to him and sat down next to him. He didn't even move. He was so focused on the float. We sat in silence for a few minutes. Then the jabberwocky muttered without turning his head. Well, what did you come for? I replied. Well, uh, uh, understand. I would like to see Pelagea. The cat itched sharply. I understood that magic cats were also eaten by fleas. Probably magical, too. She's not here. I went to the Universal Poker Championship. I inserted it. What are you doing? Jabberwocky muttered in displeasure. Yes, you can't tell the cats. He spread his paws. Discrimination, however, I replied understandingly. That's right. Here he looked at me for the first time. So why are you here? That help was needed again? All I could answer was this. Yeah, you see, there is one bastard. He destroyed my family. Then the Jabberwocky interrupted me. It was your wife who destroyed the family. You know that. If the bitch doesn't want to, then the cable won't jump up. Wow, I hate these dogs. He looked at me suspiciously. And you? Here I assured him as confidently as I could. Very much. But you understand me too, Jabberwocky. Well, do I have to take revenge on him somehow? Then the cat's face broke into a kind of wide grin. Yes, sir. I understand that. That's for me. Well done. So what is it for me? I continued. Look, I want to put this guy into such expenses that he's broke, and a woman is best suited for this. But such that, uh, do you understand? And a woman of easy virtue, my ex-wife, let her see who she traded me for. Well, can you help, eh? Jabberwocky thought for a while, and then he slapped his forehead with his paw. And you know I can help you. 
I have a witch in mind. Well, if she can't do it, then no one can. But you're not with me. She will definitely help. Okay, she'll find you on her own. Now get out or you'll scare all the fish away. I woke up again in front of my mirror with a snake in my hand. And again, this feeling of excessive fatigue. It's like I've been unloading cement wagons for two days without rest. Oh, we need to stop this mysticism. It won't end well. A couple of days later, I received a call on my mobile. Hello, I'm from Jabberwocky. I'll meet you tomorrow at noon at the cafe on the embankment. The call ended. I've prepared the data for Arcadi. I have attached his address, place of work, and even a photo. I took care of it in advance. The next day, I took a seat in the cafe in advance. It was a bit exciting. Well, you never know, or who knows these cats and their tastes. But when she came in, my eyes bulged. Yes, I have. All the cafe's visitors got it, even the women. What a woman. I've never seen anything like it. I even felt sorry for Arcadi. Such a one will eat and not notice. God, everything about her was great. Hair, face, and figure. It's just a kick in the head. I thought I heard my lower jaw hit the table. Yeah, Jabberwocky, I didn't expect it. I even respected the cat more immediately. The girl walked slowly to my table and sat down. She gave me a languid look. Stella, Jabberwocky said you needed my help. I was recovering for a few minutes. Even my mouth was dry. Listen, boy, my time is money. Will we continue to be silent? I started to tell her, but she just waved her hand. I know the essence of the question. The client? I silently handed the package of materials to Arcadi. I shrugged my shoulders. As soon as possible, she grinned. We will do it in the best possible way. I started bleeding about the payment, but she interrupted me. It's all right. Hello to Jabberwocky. With that, she got up and left the cafe. I unbuttoned the top button of my shirt and reached for the bottle of mineral water. I was unbearably thirsty. It took about four months, I think, when my daughter called me. I was not a little surprised because I called her many times and asked for a meeting. But she never had time for me. And then she called. Dad, do you mind if I stay with you for a while? Here Mom and Arcadi have scandal after scandal. I can't see it. Please, eh? What could I say? Of course, live. By the time Nastia called me, Galia and her daughter Masha and I were already living together. Well, yes, we moved in together. So what's to pull? I needed a woman. Well, I was unlucky with Olga, so what? Is everyone like that? Of course not, and I found a kindred spirit in my tick. So now we were living together. I told my daughter about this and asked her to show tact, to which she assured me that everything would be fine. And you know, everything worked out. It seemed to me that Nastia immediately found a common language with Galina and with Masha. Galia was generally a very sociable and good-natured person. It was from Nastia that I found out what was going on there. It turns out that Arkady found a new girl and already lost his head. And who would have thought such a thing? I gave up on work and spent all my time with a new sweetheart. He began to give her jewelry and, moreover, expensive and antique. I took her to the best restaurants. Olga, according to Nastya, was shocked. I just spread my hands sympathetically. And how could this happen? But you won't believe it. Olga miraculously managed to bring Arkady to his senses. She, too, has now become a kind of witch, so she was able to ward off Stella. Only Nastya told me. And now, even after she returned to her mother, we constantly called back and met that Arkashka's empire had suffered so much. It was hard with money. I don't know what Stella got him into, but apparently a lot. Even a few shops had to be closed. One word, witch. I found out that Arkady wanted to improve his position after holding a big opening day in our city. He wanted to exhibit his entire collection of valuables there. Big people were supposed to come from Moscow itself. Famous collectors, bankers, big businessmen. Seversky wanted to take a big loan for this collection. If he had succeeded, he would have pulled through. It's time to put the second part of the plan into action. In addition to all these important guests, a number of the best experts were to arrive. If Arkady wanted to get a loan, then of course an examination should have been carried out and imagine the scandal if it turned out that many of his exhibits were fake. He would definitely never recover from this, especially in his current position. He needed someone to break into the vault and replace some of the masterpieces, and considering the entire security system, it had to be an extra-class professional. And where can I get it? Once again, I remembered about the snake statuette. What if I try it one last time? What if it goes for a ride? And what did I lose? 
well, they'll drive me away and that's fine. So I decided. Now that I wasn't living alone, I couldn't risk doing it at home. I went into the forest, just into the woods. He found a comfortable place and squeezed the statuette in his hand. Currents ran down my arm. I came to myself in a beautifully decorated hall. There was a massive table in the middle. There was a beautiful samovar on the table from which Karkusha tea and a large black raven in pince-nez were drinking. They crunched sugar loudly as they drank tea together. Karkusha looked at me. And what did the asshole come for? After all, she was the rudest of the three. I cleared my throat. Well, I'd like to see Jabberwocky. I have business with him, the crow cawed. There is no Jabberwocky. He's at the Wizard Cat Festival. So tell me what you're doing. I'm tired of it already. All this time, Karkushi's interlocutor was silent, glaring at me angrily. I wondered if he was jealous. Well, I do not know if you can help me. It just so happened, but I need a professional bear thief. Karkusha chuckled. It hurts you know that I can. Okay, sit here. I am now. With these words, Karkusha rushed out of the hall. Raven turned away from me altogether. He was definitely jealous. I tried to explain to him in a few words that he shouldn't worry. It just seemed to me that he didn't believe me. Karkusha returned and shoved a card into my hands. There was only a phone number and the name Boniface on the card. She told me that I should call this number and tell her that I was from Karkusha about the expropriation. Then she croaked, They'll help you there. Now get lost. I woke up in a cold sweat. No, I should have stopped with this damn thing, so it was possible to grunt. Without wasting time, I called the phone number indicated on the card. When they answered me, I asked to invite Boniface. After he was invited, I introduced myself that I was from Karkusha. They made an appointment with me at a cafe on the embankment. The devil knows, maybe they all have a meeting place like this. I was sitting at a table in a cafe and drinking coffee when a man with a truly extraordinary appearance approached me. No, he was not handsome like Stella. But if you see such people once, then you will not forget your whole life. Not tall, stocky man. On his head was a shock of red hair that seemed to have never known a comb. A large nose and ears are not much smaller than Cheborashka's. But what especially attracted attention was the eyes, bright green, burning. Even then I wondered if he was a relative of Pelagia. He introduced himself. Boniface Buevich, Karkusha recommended you, sir, as a serious person who needs some kind of help. I pointed him to the chair opposite me. We took our time discussing my problem. Boniface listened in silence, sometimes only asking short questions. Then, after a pause, he said, Well, Vladimir, your trouble can be helped. It's not easy to do this. The security there is serious. But again, you can. I was about to offer a good reward, but he stopped me. Calm down, my friend. Those who cannot be refused have asked for you. You understand that. So let's do it. Do you have copies? I shook my head negatively. I used to have the idea of contacting Aristarchus Ivanovich with a request to advise a good copyist, but I quickly discarded this idea. The old man was too noble to get involved in this kind of adventure, and I didn't want to start our close cooperation with a crime. And that was exactly how it was. I understood that, but I went. The desire for revenge was too great. Alas, the man is weak. Boniface nodded understandingly. Nothing. Not a problem. I'll figure it out. Perhaps you want to replace some special exhibits. I spread my hands. At your discretion, Boniface. He nodded in agreement and continued. Don't worry about it. I'm not new to this kind of thing. Everything will be at its best. My fee will be the originals that I will have. So you don't owe me anything. Hello, Karkusha. With that, he got up and left. It didn't take long and day X. There were a lot of posters around the city. It was an event for us. It was rumored that even a few of the capital's stars would come. I didn't go to the opening day. I could have bought a ticket, but I decided not to show up once again. You never know. And then the thunder broke out. With a loud scandal, it turned out that almost half of the exhibits were artfully executed, but fakes. Oh, it was a holiday for the yellow press. As soon as Arkady Seversky was not inclined. And so he is, and so he is. As is usually the case with us, many people remembered that they always suspected him of being a crook and a scoundrel. Just yesterday, those who had bowed to him from afar now did not even greet him. It was the collapse of Seversky's empire. My now partner Aristarchus Ivanovich and I have registered our company. After discussing further actions, we decided that it was stupid to look for premises and invest in the renovation of our stores. 
Now that my friend Arkady was on the verge of complete bankruptcy, it was wise to take advantage of this and offer him a deal through lawyers, buying everything from him. So why not? It's just a business. The strongest wins. Natural selection and all that, isn't it? That's exactly what Arkasha once told me in person when we discussed divorce with my wife. Well, let there be natural selection. We turned to the most famous law firm in our city with a request to represent our interests. For the time being, I didn't want Seversky to know that I wanted to buy everything from him, everything he owned and lived. So I found myself standing behind the glass in the hall where the last documents were to be signed. Olga was also present with him. Admittedly, she was just as beautiful as she was before when we were married. Arkady did not resist our offer for long. It wasn't a bad way out for him. Otherwise, he would have lost everything. I watched Seversky sign document after document, puts his signature and seal, and when everything was finished, I entered the hall. At the sight of me, the lawyer started up and rushed to me. Vladimir Vasilyevich, everything is ready. Now your company is the owner of Arkady Seversky's property. Would you like to get acquainted? I was interested in watching my ex-wife's reaction. I didn't give a damn about Seversky. This bastard got his way. After all, he never felt sorry for anyone either. Business is business. Olga's reaction was amazing. She didn't immediately understand what I was doing here. And when the realization came to her, she just fell into a stupor. I casually looked through the contract documents and smiled satisfactorily. Then I went over and held out my hand to Seversky. Hello, Mr. Seversky. I'm glad that everything worked out for us. I think this is a mutually beneficial deal. Isn't that so, dear? Arkady's shoulders slumped. He shook my hand listlessly and silently trudged out. Olga followed him. She stopped at the door and turned to me. But you, Volodya, have never really loved me, dear. She was silent for a moment. You should have done all this for me. How many times have I begged you? And as soon as I left you, you became the person I always dreamed of seeing you. No, Volodya, you didn't love me. I looked into her eyes. No, Olga, I loved you. I loved him very much. I didn't just love you, but I thought that you and I were one. And you betrayed me. I threw it away as an unnecessary thing. If I fell out of love a long time ago, then why didn't I immediately file for divorce but waited until it hurt me the most? Did you beg me? And when you married the lieutenant, did you not know what was waiting for you? Did you not know the fate of the officer's wife? Why did Olya come out? I would have married some businessman or official and lived the life I dreamed of. Now it's my turn to say that it's your own fault. Goodbye, Olga, and I hope that you will be happy. With that, she left. I went to the bar and poured myself a full glass of cognac. There was a lot to drink, too. After draining my glass, I walked out of the building with a springy gait. My family was waiting for me at home. My family. We were supposed to celebrate my new status as a businessman together. Nastya was supposed to come, too. At the car door, I looked back. Not far away, Seversky and Olga were standing near their car and looking at me. I just got in the car and drove away. So it's time to return to the bridge. I was holding a snake figurine wrapped in a handkerchief. It was hard to break up because if it hadn't been for her, then everything could have turned out quite differently. But I understood that mysticism had to be ended. It was too hard. And sooner or later, after all, I could be presented with an invoice and I was not sure that I would be able to afford this account. I now had a new family, a beloved woman and two daughters. Yes, exactly two. I adopted Masha. We were all together now, and mysticism had no place there. I took one last look at the bundle and threw it into the river with a flourish. Maybe someone will find him, but it won't be me. Enough. I went home. I just decided to take a walk. It wasn't raining much, but nature doesn't have bad weather, does it? When I turned into the yard near the house that was lying, a fat black cat with a piece of sausage in his teeth got out of a dumpster. It seemed to me that he winked at me and grinned. My eyes widened. 